That's fair. I think my team, first team, is going to surprise you a little bit. I have the Jazz. Okay. So, oh, I get it. Let's hear it. I think you can very much make the case that they, again, go further in the playoffs if Donovan Mitchell isn't dealing with his ankle injury because that was clearly a thing for him. If they had Mike Conley for most of that series against the Clippers. Uh, my whole thing is, I think what's become clear is that even though their offense is going to be fine, they still need that wing stopper. It doesn't need to be an all-defense guy, but they're a Jay Crowder short, it feels like, of being really matchup-proof in the playoffs because there are, I don't view Rudy Gobert as a liability really ever. But like There are matchups like the Clippers where what he does best is not enough to overcome the deficiencies on the wing in front of him. And that's a big problem with going small is that Utah's perimeter guys, they're not going to keep a lot of these other opponents in front of them. And that seems where they're hurt most. And so there's that element of, can you get that wing type defender? And then I also think they do need the option to play small themselves. That's the direction the league has gone in. And so whether it's getting a wing stopper who can also give you those small ball minutes, um, or it's, that's a separate player. It's probably a separate player because that like, there's only so many Jay Crowders out there, and the Suns aren't just throwing Jay Crowder at the five willy-nilly themselves anyway. I don't know how they get there. Looming over all of this, by the way, is the specter of Mike Conley's free agency. The Athletics, Tony Jones reported that they're going to do whatever they can to re-sign him. And I don't view Mike Conley as someone who needs to go to a, a sexier market, but he could just want to play on a different team. Like I think that that's eminently possible. He didn't choose to be in Utah. So if he leaves, you're screwed. If he comes back, I think you have a real conversation about, I know people have mentioned Joe Ingles as the per guy they could trade. I think you look at moving Jordan Clarkson when his value is at its apex or a boy on Bogdanovich who, you know, he hit 50% of his pull-up triples in the playoffs, but I, I still, one of the, I think you can get away if Mike Conley's coming back of moving either one of those two. And the name I circled for them is if Josh Richardson opts into Dallas, is there a move to be made there? Where is it Boyan Bogdanovich for Maxi Kleba and Josh Richardson? Or is it Jordan Clarkson, Derek Favors, and number 30 for Josh Richardson and Maxi Kleba? Is there that type of framework there? There might not be. Dallas may not want to help out a rival, and I'm not sure how much better off Dallas is with that trade, but they do seem incredibly low on Richardson. But I just don't know what the move is. And again, I'm not certain and i don't it hasn't just come out that he's likely to stay in utah i just don't know what's going to happen with mike conley's free agency and if he leaves you really are in trouble because i also think and we saw this in the playoffs when he was out he's kind of mission critical to keeping rudy gobert involved in the offense yeah no i think i, I keep leaning back on i forget when it happened but you know there was i think it was probably tony jones uh, in the athletic, uh, there's a Mike Conley interview, and he all you know, he talked about how much he loved him and his family loved Salt Lake City and how they wanted to stay. And so, anytime I talk about oh, Mike Conley's free agency or whatever, I always lean back on that. Well, he likes it there, so he's going to stay. But like, what's he going to say? I I want to get out of here as soon as I possibly can. You know, it's not it's ridiculous. The 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 sort of there's there's kind of uh, it, before you start thinking about well, what can the Jazz do to improve the roster via trade, assuming Conley comes back. A Conley return on a deal on a market rate contract, whatever that ends up being, if it's like 25 a year, you know, it could, it could be more than that. Like Kyle Lowry got, I think, three for 90 a couple of years, a few on his last one. So, and Mike Conley's maybe, only that, 33. There's, I feel like right, people only. think he's as old as Chris Paul, but he's, he's only 33. But so if you're going to do that, and I think they sort of have to because you can't replace him with, you have no space to get anyone else from the outside, um, unless they're comfortable going way into the tax. You have to potentially move some of your your mid tier salary, one or two of your mid tier salary guys. So, like the guys you're talking about, Ingles, Clarkson, Favors. Um, I don't think O'Neal makes enough to really move the needle. You might have to essentially salary dump one of those guys. Like I think that's a realistic possibility too, and that only further uh, complicates the idea the, the the very necessary task of like we got to update this roster so we don't flame out in the playoffs. I, I think they clearly need a wing stopper. I think I was working on something the other week, and he's not a wing stopper. He's been overrated in this regard. But someone like Robert Covington would make sense in a scenario like they faced against the Clippers, where you you know you need guys that can scramble around. And if you're not going to shut down a guy that you're switched onto that's at a different position, 
maybe you deflect a pass and you just derail the possession. And Covington can do that. So I think someone that sort of injects a little more sort of like, well, sort of meets the chaos of small ball with his own brand of like disruptive defensive chaos, like that would make sense to me. But Co- I, what are you going to give the Blazers for Covington? I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, they clearly need to upgrade and they've got all these other financial concerns that are really going to complicate that. I thought about Derek Jones Jr. too. If he opts in, could you do a Derek Favors for Derek Jones Jr. swap? They make about the same amount of money. And Portland, whether or not they keep Nurk, could use another big. But Favors his salaries. You have to view him as an asset. He, I think, he looks more overpaid in Utah because he's playing like a, like that's a ten minute role to play behind Rudy Gobert. Yeah, on most nights. But Derek Jones Jr. at least gives you like some more pizzazz on defense. Yeah, I, I agree. I do think I think Favors just doesn't have a place on the roster if they're trying to win a title because those 10 minutes a game just don't matter and they're duplicative in the playoffs when the only reason you're not going to have Rudy Gobert on the court for the vast majority of the time is if you just want to be smaller and favors does not help you in that Which, regard. Which, again, I think they need the option of going because they don't have that right now. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I probably am not as concerned about as you, I think they'll pay whatever in tax money next year. I think it's moving forward after that. If they don't win a title or flame out in the playoffs again, they paid the tax this year. They were three point three million into the tax. About they have as of right now, they're well. That's not including Mike Conley's hold. So like, if you bring back Mike Conley, you're going to be a tax team. That's what I'm saying. You're gonna they're gonna be like it's new ownership maybe and And they're they're at the tax now basically. So yeah, that is that is different from paying three million in tax. But I think we'll probably see a favors dump. In that scenario, I don't know. You can, first of all, can't be O'Neal. He's the closest you come to having a wing stopper, so you can't even trade him for another wing stopper. That because right. you just you need him, and he just he's on such a team friendly deal, you can't afford to get rid of him. So, is there something that I mean? Is there anyone in free agency who can move the needle for them when they're like, will they even use their mini MLE if they bring back Conley? I thought about Nick Batum, just you know, maybe him and Gobert are chill, and he you know he's still getting paid from Charlotte, but he might not want to leave Los Angeles. He's someone who. I wouldn't call him the wing stopper, but he helps you. He defended a, a crap ton of tough assignments for the Clippers, and he gives you the option of going small in certain instances. It's probably not as fruitful as it was in LA, though, because he was also playing those minutes with like a Marcus Morris and a Paul George and a Kawhi at points. And just there aren't, that's the other trade off here is that going small in Utah is different from going small elsewhere because there's not like this comprehensive perimeter defense in front of you. Gobert is that defensive system. And which is a testament to Gobert, but it also puts the Jazz in some precarious spots. Yeah, I agree. 